ever noticed that plants don't eat? I mean, of course they don't eat. They use sunlight, right, to do photosynthesis. But what if it's cloudy? Do they just do less photosynthesis? Do they eat less? Do they get less energy? The short answer is yes. When it's cloudy, plants do less photosynthesis. But what's really interesting is when it goes from cloudy to sunny suddenly. Because just like when you and I walk outside into a sunny day and it takes a while for your eyes to adjust, the same is true for plants. When the sun comes out, it takes a while to get up to speed on photosynthesis. Some researchers are studying this process, because if some plants can adjust faster to a change in light, then over many hours and days, that little bit of extra photosynthesis can add up. And that's important for crops, because they use energy from the sun to make the food that we eat using photosynthesis. This rice was made by plants doing photosynthesis. If we could identify strains of rice that are faster at responding to changes in light, then maybe we could breed them to make more efficient plants and make more rice on the same amount of land. The scientists who published this cool paper worked on this problem. They took a dozen strains of rice from farms all over the world, and they grew them in a greenhouse. Then they turned on a strong LED light to simulate a transition from cloudy to sunny. To measure the rate of photosynthesis, they used this cool device, which measures the amount of carbon dioxide that the leaf takes up. See, during photosynthesis, light waves hit a protein complex in the chloroplast, which does something crazy. It splits water. The water gets split into oxygen, which the plants breathe out, and hydrogen. And the hydrogen gets split into protons and electrons. The electrons get passed like a hot potato from one protein in the membrane to another, which provides the energy to pump the protons across the membrane. And all this proton-electron shuffling generates some high-energy molecules. Now, even though they carry a lot of energy, these molecules are chemically unstable. They don't stick around long enough that you could build a grain of rice out of them. So they get used up right away by a series of chemical reactions called the Calvin cycle. What the Calvin cycle does is take carbon dioxide from the air and use the energy from those high energy molecules to attach carbon dioxides together to make a sugar. If you stick the sugar molecules together, you get starch, and that's what a grain of rice is made out of. So to measure the amount of photosynthesis the rice plants were doing, the researchers measured the amount of carbon dioxide that the plants took up, because the more photosynthesis they do, the more carbon dioxide they use. What they found is that when the light turned on, some strains of rice were faster than others at ramping up photosynthesis. Now, you might guess that those faster responding strains are just better at doing photosynthesis, but that's not the case. When the researchers looked for a correlation between ramp up speed and the maximum amount of photosynthesis a plant could do, they did not see a correlation. And that means ramp up speed and total photosynthesis rate are separate traits, which the scientists could, in theory, breed together into one super efficient plant. Studying photosynthesis is cool, especially studying how it changes in response to changing light conditions. And research like this could help us make more efficient plants, which could help us make more food on the same amount of land to feed more people. Now that's cool. <laughs>